Since July 2018, the first president of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic and the second president of the Republic of Armenia, Robert Kocharyan, has been impleted as the accused to the criminal case of March 1st, instituted on the so-called new episode. Armenian courts have recognized the CIS's motion lawful for three times and made a decision on Robert Kocharyan's detention. He is in prison for over two months. In the internal political upheavals and revolutionary bustle, many of us did not go deep into the question of what President Kocharyan was being accused of. For March 1st, that's it. Especially that Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan was constantly talking about it. However, when internal political passions calmed down and the soberness began dominating the public moods, many asked the question, sorry, but what specifically is Kocharyan being accused of? The first potential and long speculated answer was refused by the head of the Special Investigation Service in person. The accusation related to the death of 10 victims is not brought against Robert Kocharyan. <laughs> Հրապարակված փաստաթղթերում ինչպես նաև առաջադրված մեղադրանքներում չկա որևէ խոսք այն մասին որ հատուկ քնչական ծառայությունը նման պնդում է անում որ իբրև թե կեղծվել են ընտրությունները մեղադրանքը չի վերաբերվում Ռոբերտ Քոչանի կողմից այդ 10 անձանց սպանելու ցուցում տալու կամ 10 անձանց սպանությունները կազմակերպելու And this fact is irrefutable in reality, President Kocharyan has nothing to do with the victims of that day. Neither the killers, nor the ones who might have given them orders, are detected. Moreover, judging from the progress of the case, it seems that they are not looked for particularly. Well, let's move forward and try to answer the main question. Robert Kocharyan is being accused of overthrowing the constitutional order of the Republic of Armenia. Such accusations is deprived of legal grounds. Let's explain why. First of all, in order to make a conclusion on overthrowing the constitutional order by Robert Kocharyan, we must first edit considerably our modern history. We must declare that in reality, Der Petrosian had won the election in 2008, and Robert Kocharyan decided not to give him the power and to re-establish himself as the leader of the country. No, no, this won't do. It's a lie. Or that's a completely different story. The story of 1996. But it won't do otherwise too. When examining the Armenian legislation, it becomes clear that, first, Kocharyan cannot be indicted under Article 300.1 of the Criminal Code. This is the article whereby he is charged with a crime, since that article did not exist back in 2009. Although starting from June, the SIS and individuals supporting it attempt to present the contrary to the public. They claim that the same article existed in the past as well, yet under another number. That's an absolute lie though. Second. Kocharyan cannot be indicted under the effective Article 300 of the Criminal Code as well. Why? Because that article was not about the overthrow of the constitutional order, it was rather about usurpation of state power, where actions directed at overthrow of the constitutional order were stipulated as one of the ways of implementing thereof. It is noteworthy that the SIS and the Prosecutor General's Office admit that those two articles do not stipulate the same crime. Article 300 cannot be incriminated to Robert Kocharyan because that article was abolished by the National Assembly. Thus, it turns out that a present Robert Kocharyan is being indicted under such article which does not exist. It is noteworthy that under then effective Article 300, an accusation was brought against defendants of the well-known Case of Seven. And judging from the content of the accusation, it would have been brought against Nikol Pashinyan too, if he had not escaped. However, in the past, the Republic of Armenia Prosecutor General's Office refused the accusations brought with relation to the well-known case, on the same reasoning that Articles 300 and 300.1 did not define the same offense. 
and Article 300 had been abolished. Moreover, after the legislative amendment of 2009, it turned out that Articles 300 and 300.1 deteriorated a person's condition even more in comparison with the law of 2008. Therefore, a person can no longer be called to liability for deeds committed in 2008, neither under Article 300 nor under Article 300.1. Thus, it turns out that the previous so-called criminal authorities did not give retrospective effect to the law that deteriorated a person's condition with respect to Alexander Arzumanyan, Nikol Pashinyan, Myasnik Malkhazian, and others, whereas the present law-abiding and democratic authorities have applied a dual approach and given retrospective effect to the same law, the law that deteriorates a person's condition in the case when the matter concerns Robert Kocharyan. Finally, and third, the accusation of establishing factual martial law in the result of Decree 0038. During the well-known events of 2008, none of the provisions of Article 8 of the RA Law on Legal Regime of Martial Law, which defined temporary restrictions in case of declaring martial law, was enforced. Seeing a situation of martial law in those actions was the irresistible desire of the SIS, a notorious fact-finding group. By the way, it turned out that clashes between the army and the protesters had not occurred. On March 1st, the army did not shoot on people. That is an undeniable fact. <laughs> Although, despite the thesis drummed for many years, the protesters had not been peaceful at all. Here are some scenes that appeared on the internet recently, which make everything clear. In fact, it is impossible to accuse Kocharyan also of establishing martial law or establishing factual martial law, as specific by the SIS. What refers to the involvement of the armed forces, we would like to note that this is a widespread practice used worldwide during states of emergency, whereupon nobody speaks about the circumstance that a state may use the armed force without declaring state of emergency in order to safeguard state facilities. The accusation brought against Robert Kocharyan does not have any legal ground. As Nicole Pashinyan would say, the case does not hold water. Nevertheless, Kocharyan has been detained. It appears, from apparent facts, that this has been the real purpose of coming into light the new episode of Criminal Case of March 1st. Robert Kocharyan has been detained and isolated from the political life. We would like to note that the task was a rather complicated one, as it was necessary to find a way of evading the immunity prescribed by the Constitution for former presidents, which extends on Kocharyan as well. As we can see, the following way has been chosen. First, it was announced that Defense Minister Michael Harutunyan had involved the army in the political processes, which is unconstitutional, although in reality, it was Der Petrosian and Pashinyan who actually involved the army in the politics. Panakshunneri imaste etevialne. 
որ բանակիր համանատարությունը հանձինս Մանվեր Գրիկորյանի և գագի Մետքոնյանի հայտարարում է, որ երես կյազորված եմ նրանց հայտարարություն ձեզ պոխանցեր, որ Մանվեր Գրիկորյանը գագի Մետքոնյանը որպես բանակի փող նախարարներ կանգնած են իրեն ժողորդի կողգին և պաշտպանելու են ժողորդի վստահությանը արժանացած կեկտածույին։ Եվ ես վստա եմ բանակի ողջ հրամանատարությունը կմիան անրանց։ Ուրեմ են ոչ թե լևոն այդ ճիշտ է ման վեր, ման վեր, ման վեր, կագիկ, 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 կագիկ։ Ման վեր գրիք հորյաններ էր մտնում է լի տղա ներկային, որոնք էլի մեր ամախողներն էին, հիմնականում ասենք մեր տղաներից հատուկ գունդը Then it was announced that the minister could not have taken such a step without the order of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief. Then it was announced that, therefore, President Kocharyan had issued such a verbal order on February 23rd. And finally, it was announced that President Kocharyan had exceeded the scope of his powers and hence, he could not enjoy immunity prescribed by the Constitution. Pay attention, it was merely announced, without grounds, Without the decision of the Constitutional Court, it was merely announced and decided that you must give a detention order, whether you like it or not. In the context of what has been said, it can be stated unambiguously that there is a political prisoner in Armenia, that is the first president of the Nagorno-Karabakh Republic and the second president of the Republic of Armenia, Robert Kocharyan. We would like to remind that according to the definition of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, a prisoner is considered a political prisoner if the arrest, detention, is a result of proceedings which were clearly unfair and this appears to be connected with political motives of the authorities. Ավինայի հինքերը կվանգես, բայց կալանքալ ուզես չուզես պրիտաս։